Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we'll talk about inverse trigonometric functions and right triangles. So recall that the trigonometric functions are not actually one-to-one -one functions. So that means that they do not actually have inverse functions on their entire domain. However, if you restrict the domain of each of the six trigonometric functions to intervals on which the functions actually attain all the values, all the output values on that domain, then they actually become a one-to-one -one function. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve for angles and right triangles using inverse trigonometric functions. So let's discuss the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent functions. We're going to first consider the sine function. So if we restrict the domain of the sine function to angles theta between the values of negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, including the endpoints, from the following figure, you can actually see that the domain of the sine function actually attains each of the values in the interval for the values y equals negative 1 and y equals positive 1. So recall that the values of theta for the sine function's restricted domain is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. You'll have this triangle be in either quadrants 1 or 4. So if you have the angle representing theta, then the sine function of theta would be opposite, which would be y, divided by hypotenuse, which is r. So it's opposite divided by hypotenuse for the sine function in terms of right triangles. And this angle theta is anywhere between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so quadrants 4 or 1. Now let's say we want to talk about the cosine function. We need to restrict the cosine function to actually be between angles of theta between 0 and pi, including the endpoints. And so this triangle for the angle theta can actually be in quadrants 1 or 2, for the restricted cosine function. And the cosine of the angle would be adjacent divided by hypotenuse using right triangles. So cosine of theta would be x divided by r. The adjacent side, x divided by the hypotenuse, r. And then the tangent function. The tangent function, if you restrict the domain, you would have angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, but not included in the endpoints because tangent of negative pi over 2 and tangent of positive pi over 2 are undefined values. And so this means the angle theta is actually in quadrants 4 or 1 again. So this angle theta for the triangle, if tangent of theta would be opposite divided by adjacent, so it's y divided by x. So tangent of theta would be y divided by x. Now if we use the definition of an inverse function, we have the following statement summarizing the domains and the ranges of the inverse trigonometric functions. So the definition of inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent functions, the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are restricted to domains the sine function is restricted to the domain for angles theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, including the endpoints. Cosine function is restricted to the domain 0 to pi for the angles theta, where you include the endpoints 0 and pi. And tangent is restricted to angles theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, but this time not including the endpoints. If you restrict the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent function to each of these respective restricted domains, then you actually have one-to-one -one functions. The sine function, cosine function, and tangent function will actually have inverse functions. And the inverse functions will have domain and range as follows. y equals sine inverse of x, or y equals arc sine of x, will have a domain from negative 1 to 1, so including the endpoints, and then you have a range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, including the endpoints, which was the domain of the restricted sine function. The function y equals cosine inverse of x, or y equals arc cosine of x, the domain is from negative 1 to 1, including the endpoints, and the range is from 0 to pi, including the endpoints. Again, 0 to pi was actually the domain of the restricted cosine function. And the function y equals tangent inverse of x, or y equals arc tangent of x, has a domain that's all real numbers, from negative infinity to infinity, and the range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, not including the endpoints. And again, this was the domain of the restricted tangent function. So keep in mind that the inverse function and the original function, the domain of the original function is actually the range of the inverse function, and the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse function. The functions y equals inverse sine of x, y equals inverse cosine of x, and y equals inverse tangent of x are sometimes called the arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent functions respectively. So in example one, evaluating inverse trigonometric functions, find the exact value of the following trigonometric expressions. Number one, inverse sine of the value negative square root three divided by two. So since the answer will actually be an angle theta, let's call theta inverse sine of negative square root 3 divided by 2. And then you can rewrite this using the property about inverse functions. If you have theta is equal to inverse sine of negative square root 3 over 2, that's the same thing as saying sine of theta is equal to the value negative square root 3 divided by 2. And notice that the sine function is actually a negative value. So since sine of theta is negative, we're actually going to be in quadrant 4 because the inverse sine function only exists if the restricted sine function is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, that's quadrants 4 or 1. But if the sine function is negative, that means we must be in quadrant 4. So we're going to draw a triangle that's in quadrant 4 for our angle theta. So if you're in quadrant 4, we're going to draw a triangle with angle theta. And so you have this point that's represented in the triangle. You have 1 half comma negative square root 3 divided by 2 because the sine function is actually opposite divided by hypotenuse. 
And so this angle theta bar is actually called the reference angle. The reference angle must be pi over three. However, if we're in quadrant four, this must be actually negative pi over three. So inverse sine of negative square root three divided by two is equal to negative pi divided by three radians. So let's try another one. Number two, inverse cosine of the value negative one half. So again, inverse cosine is going to be an angle theta that's between zero and pi because we're talking about the inverse cosine function. So theta will be inverse cosine of negative one half. And so that says that the exactly the same thing as cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. And so notice that cosine is actually a negative value. So the inverse cosine function only exists in quadrants one and two for the angle theta. Well, if cosine is a negative value, that means we must be in quadrant two. So let's draw our triangle in quadrant two that uses the reference angle theta bar. So we have our reference triangle. The theta that's actually in the triangle is theta bar. And so theta is the actual angle that gives you this terminal side. And so this point that's determined by the triangle would be at the point negative one half comma positive square root three divided by two. And so this reference angle, theta bar, is actually the value pi over three. And so that means theta must have been two pi divided by three. That would be what is the angle that's needed to actually get to the negative x-axis or pi radians. Well, we're pi over three short of pi radians. So that means the angle theta must have been two pi divided by three. So inverse cosine of negative one half is equal to two pi divided by three radians. And then number three, let's find out the value of inverse tangent of square root three divided by three. So again, the inverse tangent function is going to return an angle theta that's between negative pi over two and pi over two, not including the endpoints. And we're gonna call theta inverse tangent of square root three divided by three. And so that says the exactly the same thing as tangent of theta is equal to square root three divided by three. We're trying to find out what is the angle theta that gives you square root three divided by three for tangent. And so if this is a positive value for tangent, and the inverse tangent function only exists between quadrants four and one. And so since tangent is a positive value, we're actually in quadrant one. And so let's draw our triangle in quadrant one. So theta bar is actually this angle, the reference angle of the triangle. And our point is actually squirt three divided by two comma one half, because that's where tangent is equal to squirt three divided by three. And so that angle that's in this triangle, the reference angle is equal to pi divided by six. And so inverse tangent of squirt three divided by three is equal to pi divided by six radians. So example two, we're going to use the calculator to evaluate inverse functions. So use the scientific or graphing calculator to find approximate values for the following trigonometric expressions, round your answer in radians to two decimal places. So our answers are gonna be angles. So our angle is gonna be in terms of radians. So we'll make sure your calculator is in radian mode. So number one, we're gonna find out the value of inverse sine of 0.71. In other words, in other words, what is the angle theta in radians where the sine function is equal to 0.71? Let's find out. If you go to second and then the sine button, you'll actually have inverse sine in blue. So inverse sine of 0.71, make sure your calculator's in radians and you'll have 0.789 radians. In other words, if you take sine of 0.789 radians, you'll get a value that's really close to 0.71. Number two, let's find out the value of inverse tangent of two. So in other words, we're trying to find out what is the angle theta between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, because that's where tangent is restricted its domain, where the tangent function is equal to two. So inverse tangent, second, and then the tangent button, you'll see inverse tangent. So inverse tangent of two, and this will return in radians, 1.107 radians. So tangent of 1.107 radians is approximately equal to two. And then number three, we want to find out the value of inverse cosine of two. However, notice that x equals two is not actually in the domain of the inverse cosine function, y equals cosine inverse of x. Remember that the inverse cosine function's domain is from negative one to one, including negative one and including one. However, if you have an input value of two that's outside the domain, and so this inverse cosine of two, it's an undefined value. So now that we talked about inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent, let's talk about how to solve for angles in right triangles. In order to solve a triangle, you need to use trigonometric functions to find unknown sides. Now we're gonna use inverse trigonometric functions to find unknown angles in a right triangle. So example three, we're going to solve for an angle in a right triangle. Suppose that a 40 foot ladder leans against a building. If the base of the ladder is six feet from the base of the building, what is the angle formed by the ladder and the building? And so you have a building and you have the ground level and you have a, this ladder that's 40 foot long and it's leaning up against a building and the base of the ladder is six feet from the base of the building. We wanna find out what is this angle theta that's formed between the ladder and the building. So let theta represent the angle formed between the ladder and the building. 
So now notice, if you have this angle theta, we know the side that's opposite this angle theta, it's six feet. That's the distance between the base of the ladder and the base of the building. And we also have the hypotenuse because that's across from the right angle. That's the length of the hypotenuse is 40 feet. So we want to use the sine function because sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse, which in this case will be six feet divided by 40 feet, or it's the ratio three divided by 20. However, we don't want to know what is the ratio for the sine function. We don't want to know it's 3 20ths. We want to find out what is this angle theta that's formed between the ladder and the building. So if sine of theta is equal to 3 20ths, we want to find out what is theta. So take inverse sine on both sides of the equation. So inverse sine of sine of theta. And so the inverse sine function will cancel out the sine function. And so you'll just be left with theta on the left side of the equation. And on the right side of the equation, you have inverse sine of 3 divided by 20. And so let's evaluate what is the inverse sine of 3 20ths. Make sure that your calculator is in radians. And so inverse sine of 3 divided by 20, close parenthesis on the inverse sine function, you get 0 0.1506 radians if you're in radian mode. However, if you want to find out what is the angle theta in terms of degrees, you can convert your answer to degrees by multiplying by 180 divided by pi, or you can actually just repeat by taking your calculator and change to degree mode. And now just evaluate what's the inverse sine of 3 divided by 20 again. And now your answer will be in degrees. And so theta is inverse sine of 3 20ths is approximately 8.627 degrees. And that's the angle that's formed between the ladder and the building. Example four, we're going to find the height of a pole. Suppose that a 50 foot pole cast a shadow as shown in the following figure. So you have this pole that's 50 foot long and then the sun is on one side of the pole and it casts a shadow on one side of the pole. Find an expression for the angle of elevation theta of the sun as a function of the length s of the shadow. Find the angle of elevation theta of the sun when the shadow is 20 foot long. So in the first case, we want to find out if the shadow's length is s feet, let's find out what is an expression in terms of theta involving the variable s. So we have this angle theta that's formed between the length of the shadow and also the direct sunlight. And then we have s that's representing the length of the shadow in feet. So let theta represent the angle of elevation from the ground to the sun. And so we have, in terms of theta, we have the opposite side is 50 feet, and we also have the adjacent side, which is s feet. And so since we have opposite and adjacent, we want to use the tangent function. Tangent of theta is opposite divided by adjacent, which in this case will be 50 divided by s. And so tangent of theta is equal to 50 divided by s. That's an expression for the angle of elevation as a function of the length s of the shadow. Now, however, we are also given the value of the length of the shadow. If the length of the shadow is 20 foot long, we actually can find out what is the angle of elevation theta. And so tangent of theta is equal to 50 divided by 20, if that's the value for the length of the shadow, s. So then we actually can reduce this fraction to be five over two. And so tangent of theta is equal to five divided by two, or 2.5. You wanna find out what is the angle theta? Well, if you wanna cancel out the tangent function on the left-hand side of the equation, you can use the inverse tangent function. So take the inverse tangent function on the left side of the equation, but then also take the inverse tangent function on the right side of the equation as well. And so inverse tangent of tangent, they're inverse functions of one another, so they'll undo each other or cancel out. And so you're just left with theta. Theta is equal to inverse tangent of the right side of the equation, which is five divided by two. So now let's grab a calculator and find out what is the angle theta in terms of radians and also degrees. So if your calculator is in radian mode, you can actually calculate what is the inverse tangent of five divided by two, and then close parenthesis on the inverse tangent function, and your answer is 1.1902 radians. So theta is approximately 1.1902 radians. That will give you tangent of theta is equal to five over two. Or if you actually calculate this in terms of degrees, make sure you calculate in terms of degree mode. And so change to degree mode, and now evaluate what's inverse tangent of five divided by two is approximately 68.199 degrees, if you round to three decimal places. And so the angle theta that's formed between the shadow and the sun is actually, it's a 1.1902 radian angle or 68.199 degree angle. So as we're going to see in the next two sections, we're going to learn how to solve any triangle that's not necessarily right triangles. The angles in a triangle are always between 0 and 180 degrees, or in terms of radians, it would be between 0 and pi radians. We're going to see if you want to solve such triangles, we're going to need to find all the angles in the interval zero to pi that have a specified value of sine or cosine. So example five, solving a basic trigonometric equation on an interval. So find all the angles theta between zero degrees and 180 degrees, satisfying the given trigonometric equation. Number one, the equation is three times sine of theta is equal to pi divided by six. We want to find out what is the value of theta, what's the angle theta, where three times sine of theta will give you pi divided by six. 
So let's divide both sides of the equation by 3, so we can get the sine function isolated on one side of the equation. So if you take 3 times sine of theta and divide the left side of the equation by 3, you'll get sine of theta. And if you take the right side of the equation, pi over 6, and divide by 3, you'll get pi divided by 18. Well, we've seen this type of equation before. If you want to find out what is sine of theta equals pi divided by 18, we want to take the inverse sine function on both sides of the equation because we want to undo the sine function, and we can just get theta by itself. So take inverse sine on the left side of the equation, and you just get theta back because the inverse sine and sine functions are inverses. But then you also need to take inverse sine on the right side of the equation. That will give you inverse sine of pi divided by 18. And so remember, this angle theta can only be between 0 and 180 degrees. So that would be quadrants 1 or 2. But if the sine function is positive pi divided by 18, we must be in quadrant 1. And so our angle theta must be in quadrant 1 for our triangle. So we want to find out what is this angle theta in quadrant 1 where the point that's on this triangle would be x for the x coordinate and pi divided by 18 for the y coordinate because the sine function was defined to be the y coordinate of the terminal point. So if our angle theta is between 0 and 180 degrees and we also know that theta must be in quadrant 1, we actually can find out what is inverse sine of pi divided by 18 and we actually find out it's equal to, in degrees, 10.051 degrees. So that's this angle theta in quadrant 1 that actually forms our triangle. The angle theta must be 10.051 degrees. Now, on the other hand, if you actually are talking about the inverse sine function, the inverse sine function only exists for angles theta between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Since the sine function was positive pi divided by 18, the sine function is actually a positive value. So we're not talking about quadrant 4. We won't have the angle negative 10.051 degrees. That's not a solution to the trigonometric equation. Only the value positive 10.051 degrees because the sine function must have been positive. It must have been positive pi divided by 18. So let's try another one. Number two, you have the trigonometric equation negative 2 times cosine of theta is equal to negative 0.8. So again, let's try to get the trigonometric function isolated on one side of the equation first. So divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. So take negative 2 cosine of theta and divide by negative 2 and you'll get cosine of theta. On the right side of the equation, take negative 0.8 and also divide by negative 2 and you'll get 0.4. And so now, if you want to get theta by itself, you need to undo the cosine function. Well, to do that, you need to take the inverse cosine function on both sides of the equation. So take the inverse cosine function on the left side of the equation. So inverse cosine and cosine will undo each other because they're inverse functions, and you'll just get theta back. And so on the right side of the equation, you take inverse cosine of 0 0.4. And recall that the angle theta must be between 0 and 180 degrees, or 0 and pi radians. And so we are in quadrants 1 or 2, which is exactly the same quadrants for the inverse cosine function to exist. Inverse cosine is only defined if the angle theta is between 0 and pi radians. And so that is exactly quadrants 1 or 2. So let's find out what the value for the angle theta would be in radians first. So let's find out. If it's inverse cosine of 0 0.4, you actually find out it's 1.159 radians for the angle theta. However, if you want to find out what is the angle theta in terms of degrees, make sure that you're in degree mode. So change to degree mode and now actually recalculate inverse cosine of 0 0.4 and it's approximately 66.42 degrees. And so that is if you're actually in quadrant 1. So if the angle theta is in quadrant 1, it would be a 1.159 radian or 66.42 degree angle. However, you have to be a little careful here because you actually have quadrants 1 or 2 as possibilities for your solution theta, and the inverse cosine function actually exists only because the angle theta is between 0 and pi radians, and we are between 0 and pi radians. And so the other angle theta would actually be in quadrant 2. So this angle would be 180 degrees. If you went a half revolution, it would be 180 degrees. Subtract the angle theta. That actually would give you the same angle in each of the triangles in quadrants 1 or 2. And so this other angle that's actually in quadrant 2 would be the angle 180 degrees subtract 66.42 degrees, which was the angle in quadrant 1, which gives you 113.58 degrees in quadrant 2. However, notice that the cosine function was actually a positive value. It was actually cosine of theta was 0 0.4. Well, the cosine function is only positive in quadrant 1. And so we won't have an answer of 113.58 degrees because that actually was where an x value is negative. You actually would get negative 0 0.4 comma y, not positive 0 0.4 comma y. And so the only answer would be 66.42 degrees, or in terms of radians, it'd be 1.159 radians.
So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we talked about how to solve for angles and right triangles using inverse trigonometric functions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about how to evaluate expressions involving inverse trigonometric functions.